Hey everybody, welcome into the Letterman Lounge. This is Letterman Live. It's at Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint. We are back again. Jay-Z's down there already digging in yes. to the wings. Mm. Justin Zwick, Bobby Carpenter, and Nicole Cox, gracious enough to host us again. We're going to a lot to get to as we get into March and basketball uh, heating up or cooling down, depending on your perspective, heading into the postseason. Spring ball uh, just a couple weeks away. There's a new ticketing policy that Bob is just going to enlighten mm, us on. I can't wait for that. Uh, very excited about that. And then one of the most annoying things I find about college football and the coverage of this sport uh, has already started early. So we'll get into that mm. later on in the program. Spencer Holbrook will join us. Uh, he's going to have some insight on what's going on there. But um, most we, we were sitting here last week just talking about this red-hot basketball team at Ohio <laughs> State, and you know they played a close game with Michigan, and the schedule is obviously hard, but now three in a row. And I just can't, every time this happens, I can't help but think of how different the perspective is on if this like, – you almost play – you play a close <laughs> game for football at Ohio State, it's like the sky is falling. And the perspective <laughs> on these two programs, and like, it's really not that big of a deal, right? You lose three games in basketball, it happens. Um, but nobody seems that, that worried about it, and they just – it's okay. It's no big deal. I, I do think, though, there is – Austin, like a little bit of concern because the expectations got raised to the point where you start talking about being a potential one seed. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, one seed, potentially winning national championships now, final four. Like you start projecting all that out, and then you lose a tight win to Michigan. It's like, okay, they're a really good team. You know, you'll get a chance to potentially see them again in the Big Ten tournament, assuming that goes off, or maybe you see them later down the line. You know, but as long as you get the ship righted, everything will work out well. You know, you lose to Michigan State in a tough one where they're fighting for their lives, then you get smoked by Iowa, and then you get, to be asked, you get asked these questions of, hey, uh, is this more of what you really are, or was it what we saw for like mm -hmm. nine games? Yep. And just trying to kind of figure that out. And it's tough. Basketball is such a long season, so you don't get penalized nearly as much for a single loss. And mm -hmm. I understand that. And I think part of it, too, is the expectations here. I mean, Ohio State people take pride in basketball, but – you know, nobody's sitting here pounding, you know, pounding their fist if you're not making it to the Sweet 16 every year, which in football, it's, I mean, it's much harder to make it to the Final Four and, you know, college football playoff in football, but I would say it's probably equal to making it to, like, the Elite Eight. I would say it's probably about the same, and no one would be pounding their fist if the team, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. didn't make it. You'd be upset if they lost in the first round, but hey, you make the Sweet 16, lose a tough game, all right, you know, it's it's basketball, it's, it's tough, this is how it works. So it's just the dichotomy, Nicole, like dealing with football versus basketball and how these losses are treated. Yes, yes, I know. And I, it's funny, Bobby, I never thought of it that way, but you're right, it is kind of like making it to the Elite Eight. So, <clears throat> um, and I feel, you know, I feel like maybe their confidence and just the mental state of them right now is just, you know, after that many losses in a row, it starts to play with you. But hopefully the excitement of March Madness will, you know, yeah. help help yeah, them play the better. In tournament, you know, coming yeah. around the corner, a chance to kind of uh, right the ship a little bit. Uh, and the, the unfortunate thing for them is, in my opinion, because I only watched – the first game I watched was the Michigan yeah, right. game, right? So it's like, oh, man, we got our basketball team going this way. <laughs> Let's watch it go – you know, go Bucks. I'm watching the basketball game. To turn the channel. Is that well, a problem? <laughs> maybe that's what it was because, you know, it started with that Michigan game where, you know, that's when a lot more eyes start coming, though, you know, a big matchup like that, and then they played well. They played very kinda, well. Yeah, and and I think, you know, I think Michigan State, they were down a couple guys. Weren't Kyle Young, I think, was out with a concussion, concussion or something along those lines. So that can mess with things. Um and I think even Washington was out for it was something, wasn't he? Um, after the big game on Michigan, maybe not. But, it, you know, basketball is just one of those things. The shots are falling for you. Things are going great. But when they're not, you know, you got to find answers. And, you know, they didn't have anything yesterday with Iowa. They just – I mean, that Garza kid, is he a senior? Yeah. But, I mean, that dude, I mean, he's stepping out behind the arc. Just, I mean, doing it all for him. He, he's pretty solid. Well, it's tough because that's the one thing Ohio State, they, they don't have much they don't mm -hmm. have much size. You know, yeah. you're talking their, their front line guys are 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, Physical, athletic, they play good team defense, but it's tough. And Illinois, is, you know, they're coming to town. They're, they've got the same set of issues that you've got to deal with. You know, when you're playing, uh, oh wait, yeah, playing Illinois. I mean, they've got they got seven footers that, that are yeah. inside that are good. And so you're gonna have to figure out. Hey, you can't grow overnight. Mm -hmm. So you got to try to score, push the basketball. And it wasn't even really the defense. I mean, Iowa scores in the upper 80s. You know, you held them in the midst with 75 yeah. points. and Did not know that. It, I'm going to be yeah. honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank I, you. Though. Oh, this, Iowa goes yeah. and scored. But the problem is, Iowa's not a good defensive team, and you only muster 57 yeah, yeah. points. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Like, And Clark Kellogg outlined that at halftime where, hey, you're not going to expect to hold Iowa to mm -hmm. 70 or 65. Like, You're going to have to score 80, and they just – 
looked so incoherent on offense, like they couldn't develop any type of rhythm. Yeah, that was you know very different from the first matchup with Iowa, where they both teams just put on uh, a scoring clinic. Uh, one of the well, even the matchup against Michigan, you know, the week before, you know, they held right. I mean, Michigan was shooting the lights out, and they stayed right there with them the entire the game, entire time. You yeah. know, so I mean, you don't you don't know where that disconnect come from. Just a bad week, you know, for guys and you're shooting the ball. But uh, so, sometimes I wonder, and Nicole, you can speak to this, like. Ohio State fans are so invested in football, 365 days a year. Like, there's only so much attention that anyone can have on it. And I'm, I'm making general statements, blanket statements that are probably not fair, but it just it seems like part of the reason, aside from there being 30 basketball games compared to 12 to 15 for football, is that you only, you only have so much bandwidth. Like, if Ohio State cares as much about football, and I don't know if this applies to you or not, but it, there's only so much work up, so much intensity – so much disappointment that you're going to put on basketball if all your attention is on football for most of the year. Well, and I think part of it, too, is this year, particularly, people weren't able to go to the games. And I think that's what gets people more excited to watch them at home, too. Right. It's an evening out, and then you're invested when you're there and able to watch. And I know it was the same for football, but football was different just because it was kind of one of the first, you know, it was like, <laughs> we have football, where everybody was so excited. So I think that might have played into it a little bit, too. Um, but we'll see during the bracket, you know, the next couple weeks how they're playing. Because if they're playing really well, then I know I know everybody will <laughs> no, be into it. Will well, be excitement, yeah. but it's just different because you got a, a week long build up for a football game, right? You know, every week, and it matters if you lose, you could be out of everything. So, I, I think that just gets people more excited about it because basketball, they played three games this past week, right? <laughs> it's just like, oh, I missed two of them. <laughs> you know, I caught one on Sunday or, you know, whatever it is, but it's not that, man, we got Michigan next week. It's going to be a big game, you know, and everybody watches that one game because there's just so many of them. And, you know, that's why you. The tournament is so big because it's one and done and you got to watch every game and that's why everybody's on that it because, is. man, you lose, you go home. You know, the regular season just doesn't have that same feel. And I think part of it, too, your football is more, it's obviously in these big arenas, you know, they're in the big stadiums. You know, some of them are obviously dome, but it's open air, it's outside. There's a little bit more feel, I guess, when you're watching the game whereas watching basketball inside, like without any fans, it's a mm -hmm. very stale environment. Look at that Ohio State Michigan game. I think it was the highest rated college basketball game all season. And you yep. can only imagine like watching it and the intensity that you would have when you would have 17, 18,000 people yeah. in the stadium or in, uh, in St. John's for that. So, or the shot. I wish right. it was St. John's. I wish yeah. it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's just, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a disconnect there with that. And I think that that would have helped because there really wasn't the expectation here coming into the season mm -hmm. that this team was going to be great, that they grew into that expectation. Whereas every year with football, it's college football playoff. This year, I think, hey, could you be a tournament team, maybe mm -hmm. win a game? Yep. And then all of a sudden, those things start creeping up as you win more and more. The question becomes, like, and you get worried, did they peak too early? Were they doing some things too early, and now they're struggling a little bit? And, you know, they started CJ, they put Arns on the bench. He hasn't been able to get shots. People are starting to figure him out a little bit. Yep. And so... It's going to be up to Coach Holman to kind of put some new sets together and try to figure out how to jumpstart that offense. Well, and like you said, you know, these teams are watching them have trouble with big guys. So if you have a big guy on your team, you're going to say, man, we got to follow this, you know, this uh, team that did this to them and, and beat them by 20 points. So we're going to try and emulate that and see if they've made changes. And I'm sure Coach Holman, will, will, he's, he's back to the drawing board trying to figure something out, trying to get something going down there. Bob, did you and Jay-Z, when you were players, and you know that the standard of what the football program is held to, did you ever – Compare that to basketball. Our basketball like, team was not good when we were here. <laughs> like, like, I mean, man, wouldn't that, wouldn't, <clears throat> I know, yeah, I know how competitive down. you guys are, but man, like, wouldn't that be nice if people didn't complain when we won a game by ten? <laughs> <laughs> it would. It would be nice. And like and I well, say that TD was here. He was Big Ten Player of the no, Year. Was yeah. that our junior year? I think it was. Year after. He's either a year older or a year younger than me. I'm not. He's sure. a year older than us. He, yes. he was a year older than us high school. Wise. And so you know, and they were. I say not very good. I mean, they, they were good and competitive, but it wasn't. You know, like. Odin and Conley then your, yeah, my senior, your senior year, yeah. year all of a sudden when it turned over Thad got here they worked through it and you know they had some big wins but there wasn't near the expectation of that and so there wasn't really the pressure I think of it and yeah it would be nice sometimes <laughs> but with that being said I didn't go to a single mm -hmm. college I didn't go to a single Ohio State basketball game when I was in college I mean I went to two women's games because we had to go with the football team right I, I mean it's just in the winter <laughs> there's not like I'm there, there's nothing around it you know, like it's just it's, 
it's yeah, you're parking in a parking lot. And you're walking the up there. The wind's walk, blowing. It's cold. Yeah. It sucks. You, you, couldn't, you couldn't drink beers in there back in the day. I'm like, what? What is this providing me? <laughs> you know, like I'll just watch the game in my house. Yeah. Get some mac and cheese bites and sit go here and yeah. get some Coors Lights. Pick up their roosters and go home and have some Coors Light. <laughs> yes, and that's all. That's how I watch it. Consuming. So yeah. you know about someone that played basketball in high school. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Knew some of the guys on the team. It's just. It's just so far away from campus and everything. Like those are that's real. Yeah. My wife, they tried one year. They got all her friends got season tickets, and one of her good friends was dating one of the basketball players. Like we're going to make it like football. That was their thing. <laughs> she goes, it lasted for like four games. Like it's so far away. Mm. Like, it's, but it is like relative to where the stadium is. It's a hall over there, and there's nothing like in between. Like varsity clubs, your last gasp of anything yeah. before you have to walk <laughs> across the bridge. <laughs> That is true. I I mean, unfortunately, we went through a three-game losing streak when <laughs> our sophomore year, so we know it. That okay. it's well, not the same uh, as uh, the basketball boy. team. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. There's a lot of bad stuff going yeah. on back then. I First can only time. imagine but, what it was like in this town. Yeah, that but period. I'll say this. You come to a place like Ohio State as a football player because you know. Man, the expectations are there. we got to perform every week, you know, and if we do, down the road, we're going to have a chance to go to the playoff. I know that I always try to avoid the comments uh, on all these videos and Letterman Live and discussions about football and basketball. But Spencer sent one last week. Uh, I just I couldn't really believe it. It was like Chris Holtman has just done such a better job than Ryan Day. And I know that's one person. Again, I'm not trying to talk about yeah, everybody. Who'd you say Spencer said that? Spencer sent it to me. Oh, sent it to you. I it thought on, it was in the comments, you know, from Letterman Live last week. And and again, you take all that with a grain of salt. I don't know who said it. I don't know that person. I don't know if they'd say it if they sat at this table with us. But to me, it's only put in perspective how difficult the job was that Ryan Day had to. The expectations a are are so high every year, but going through a pandemic. Uh, having shorthanded roster in the title game, and then suddenly people thinking that he didn't, you know, he, they underachieved after they beat the absolute daylights out of Clemson in the Sugar Bowl. How, you know, that's that's what really puts it in perspective for me, like how low, relatively low that bar is for basketball compared to what Ryan Day has yeah. to meet every single year. When Chris and Chris Holman's done, he's a doing thing. a great job. He's, he's done a great job. fantastic job. No it's, doubt, it's the job was mm-hmm. different when he came in. It was uh, there was a severe mess that he had to take care of. You know, the talent wasn't necessarily there. They had some cultural things with guys. Just I think we're a little soft, and so he took that and like you know what, a couple of years like got into the tournament, won a game. You're like wow, like it, was, it far exceeded your expectations. Ryan Day slid in. It's like all right, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> win a national. You got a national like, championship football team. You better get and the that's, playoff. And that and so it's a completely different set of expectations that he's had to deal with. And frankly, like you said, people are upset this year. Upset with being pretty clearly the second best team in the country you just weren't as good as one of maybe nick yeah. saban's best national championship team of all time exactly. and so that's that is the standard that you're compared against so it's it's very very different by any by any metric yeah i mean there's what two or three colleges that are basketball that way like if you lose i mean and they're all doing it this year they're, they're I mean, all, all the blue blue yeah, yeah they're all coming you know you got your kentucky your duke I'm probably missing two or three more, but uh, yeah, I mean, Carolina. Th- there's not many. And even North Carolina's football program is starting to come. And I think if that if if he if he were to get that going, I, people just like I don't know. I don't want to say I don't want to say people like football more, but I think it's just you invest more in those week to week games. And Nicole and I talked about this last week after the show that it's rare that you have a place like Ohio State that can support both. We talked about that a little bit during Letterman Live, um, but like you don't see Kentucky able to do that at a high level. You know, if they're the places that have the the budgets, the fan base, the you know everything in place, the facilities on down the line, recruiting. Like we're talking about Ohio State. Uh, you know, Florida did it briefly, but they've not mm-hmm. done it on a permanent basis. Uh, you know, Texas, and that's pretty much it. Like mm-hmm. it's Oklahoma has flashes where they could do both. Or you know, you might have Alabama's oh, flashing this year. They yeah. won the yeah. I think they, they won the SEC. I think. But, right? but Nicole, you just can't. You can't keep it up. Like, most places can't do this. I know. And I, you know, I was just thinking about it. Like, UK, I I think a lot of it has to do with tradition, too. I mean, it's just part of the culture of Columbus. I mean, Ohio State football is what we are known for. And I think that it's hard to, not that you want to break that cycle, but it's, that's what we're known for. So that's what everybody, you know, our kids are raised in that environment. And so I think that's what makes the difference too. But Coach Day and Holtman, I think it's hard to compare them to, especially with this year with COVID. Every day was different. So Coach Day had to deal with a lot, with different things, just 
with the regulations and all of that. So that was on his plate as well. So I just think it's like comparing apples to oranges, kind right. of. And it's not even like, I just thought that it was an unfair comment to make because yeah. like, uh, one is not underachieving. One might have been a week ago slightly overachieving or, mm. or more, depending on how much you want to grade it, Bob. But like to suggest that Ryan Day left something on the table last year, to me, is absolutely crazy. <laughs> I, that's why I challenged someone like, what? Like they got out coached. I'm like, I, mm, I, they didn't have necessarily the players. Yeah, that, have the maybe, horses, right? Maybe there was some different coaching things that you could have done uh, potentially. But, you know, Alabama had a lot of their guys come back. You lost Chase Young and Jeff Okuda. You put those in Damon Arnett. You put those three mm-hmm. guys back on the defense. And Jordan yeah. Fuller. And Jordan Fuller. I think you put those four guys yeah. on there. Definitely. It's, it's a big, big difference yeah. of what of what you had and especially with Chase and Jeff because those guys had extra they had a year yeah, of eligibility yeah. left mm-hmm. and they were a second third pick in the draft like Chase Young makes a massive impact oh, on that game and mm-hmm. so does Akuda because then you have a guy that you can lock up over there and uh you know hopefully and try and slow Smith, Smith down yeah I mean, so it, to say you know they underachieved they were second best team in the country like if you, I told him, like if you would have said you outlined that game plan, this is what you always try to have to do. Go back to the beginning of the year. First of all, you didn't think there was going to be a season. Then there's a season. Then you weren't going to be in the Big Ten championship. You ultimately get there. Just you're so glad that you know the some of your key guys like Fields or something didn't come down with COVID. And mm-hmm. You're able to manage through everything, and you smoke Clemson and then yeah. lose the Bama in the yeah, you championship. Get your revenge, and then you, like that's. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody would have taken that if I would have tried to feed that mm-hmm. to you on like. August 14th. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Like, hey, I'm, I'll give me it. Yeah. We get to beat Dabo and Clemson. Perfect. Yeah. I guess, if we don't have a season right now, um, if we do, this is how it's going to end up. Everybody say, yes, yeah. give, give me that. I get to cover that and go through the season. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'm taking it 100%. So it's just it's just like you said, those expectations, man. And it's it's because you see Ohio State recruit at such a high level. You have all these guys, and you, know, you watch them churn down the NFL. And so it's, it's just happened over a longer, more consistent period of time. But like I said last week, Ohio State could, with Ryan Day and Chris Holtman, could be the first school, to my knowledge, where they would have three consecutive head football coaches with national championships yeah. and three consecutive basketball yeah. coaches make Final Fours. Right. Like, that's a remarkable. I don't even know if anyone's ever two dudes do that back to back. I don't think so. Uh, three, uh, that puts it, I mean, that's, that's like a 25, 30 year run that you start talking about yeah. there with how good some of these coaches are, have been. It's phenomenal. It really is. They are. They're just great coaches. We're very lucky. It's been fun to watch. We still got a lot more to go. We've got a um, couple of baskets of mac and cheese. Yep, mm-hmm. mac and cheese bites tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? In celebration yes. for celebration Anthony Schlegel's birthday. Did you birthday. Mark, uh, move the schedule around just for Schlegel? <laughs> no, <laughs> it just happened to be that way, but I would have. I would have moved the schedule around for that. It's auspicious, Austin. I mean, that's <laughs> it just happened that way today, March 1st. March 1st. Anthony Schlegel. Big 4 40 years old. Today? Yeah. Today. The big 4 oh I thought that was like 10 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> so did we. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was back in 04 when we, when we I met I thought him. he was our age. I was like, I, I didn't know he was that old. Yeah. <laughs> did, he co- did he come up this weekend, Bob, to celebrate? Yeah, with yeah we had a little birthday forty uh, party for him on uh, Saturday, Saturday and it was tough. It's kind of like a celebration of the job, birthday yeah. party, going away Saying party. goodbye kind of thing. Yeah. yeah it was nice. It, you know, so... You know, people got him some gifts. Someone got him a shake weight. I mean, he did. I thought that was you. It was uh, somebody. I, when I saw it, I was like, was Bobby definitely somebody got did. that for him. No, if you see it, Schweig's the best. Shake oh, weight yeah. from the waist to the face. He's, <laughs> he's as good as it gets. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, have it, how's he doing? Hey, why is he not popped All in gas, here? No he, he was going to come say goodbye <laughs> I know. and eat some mac and cheese bites. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that, that flight must have left earlier this morning. That's, yeah. Uh-huh. Get down there. He's just going to work. Hey, you know what? Going to work. Charge it, it to win. 11 yeah. 30, charge it to winning. Showing out, growing out, getting those arms big and pumped up with the shake weight. People he loved it. He the best. He was awesome. <laughs> he is awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. about it. What else is going on in March, Nicole at Roosters? Um, we just, you know, the tournament's coming up. So we'll be well, you here. Got, here's a question for you. Will you put out a. Uh, because the tournament's weird this year, right? Yeah. So are you going to put out like a calendar of what games are going to, you yes, know, just so people at Roosters will kind of have, yeah, an so idea of when to come be, in and all that yes, sort of thing? we Perfect. usually have brackets posted in the stores okay, yep. um, just so people can Because if it's on Monday, it's usually what? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if it's different days, it's you different. Know, make sure you get to Roosters and 
Check yeah. those early week games out. Jay Z's getting good at this. Try it. Oh, thanks. We're, gonna, we're hiring him. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to kick out. He's just going to take over the show, and then I'm not going to speak. This here. is going to be my office back here. Well, yeah. We're, <laughs> yeah I'm, not, I'm not even on the wall, dang it. Oh, you guys are. We're waiting oh, on the okay. campus. Oh, remember? Okay, but okay. New nice decor I mean, for the Letterman Lounge back here. You. Nicole gets you all these. I'm going to be in that seat down there before you know it, Austin. He's still just worried about where his picture is back here. <laughs> well, she went to look for it. I had to tell her it's not here yet. <laughs> we took Krenzel down in the corner. I know. Just to make, make room for you. Everybody's going back up. All right. We'll make you hear it here first. All right. They're going back up. Nicole's <laughs> heading out. She's got some real work to do. We're going to bring Spencer Holbrook in, and Letterman Live is going to roll li- right along here at Roosters. Roosters is one of the unique companies that we deal with. They're involved in everything we do, from our personal foundation to also the Cancer Research Fund. And that's from the Buckeye Cruise from Cancer to all the events leading up to the Buckeye Cruise. They donate back to different organizations that are near and dear to their heart. And we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long, long time. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. All right, welcome back into the Letterman Lounge as we roll along here in Rooster. Spencer Holbrook has now joined us. Uh, Spencer, before we dive into what really gets me heated, mm-hmm. tell me, tell us what happened over the weekend on the recruiting trail to maybe set the scene for what we are going into after that. What happened so, for uh, the rivals this weekend? Oh, yeah, five-star cornerback Will mm-hmm. Johnson from Gross Point, Michigan, mm-hmm. in-state, okay. in Michigan. Detroit kid. Also from Michigan, okay. From Michigan. Where did his dad, his dad play somewhere? His dad played football. At Michigan. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Okay. He committed Michigan, Michigan. to Michigan. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. So is that something that people should f- just absolutely flip out over or for national v- media to say, oh, Jim Harbaugh's got it figured out. It seems like a great turnaround. Let's get it going. Let's get the hype machine for the Wolverines in full gear. I feel like you know the answer to this. Well, you want the segment to be longer than two minutes. Oh, so okay. I'm going to say no. All right. So this was not <laughs> a surprise to anyone. No, because, well, it, I guess Ohio State at one point – was about to land the commitment until Michigan. Oh, really? Yeah. Michigan and Jim Harbaugh was. They were like, "Hey, why don't you just take some time and get to know our new defensive coordinator, and then try to make a decision?" The guy was like, "The kid was like, oh, okay, well, maybe I should do that." And so he was. I mean, we're, we're talking this close to, to commit to Ohio. <laughs> State. You're telling me that well, they thought he was a he was a lean to Ohio State. He was. So Berm, when Berm wrote about this recruitment about a week ago, and there was, uh, you know, a slight impermissible contact uh jordan lewis on the phone with it was a defensive coordinator cornerbacks coach i don't remember which i don't think it's a big deal in fact i think former players should be involved in the recruiting yeah, process why not? because nobody knows yeah they've been better. through they know it's so there is no you know i mentioned this a week ago it's it's interesting but i don't think it's uh i don't think michigan is cheating to get it and i don't think they should have had to cheat maybe to land this particular recruit but what really uh <laughs> Annoys me every year. We talked. We've talked about this before, Jay Z. With you know, get these preseason polls, and nobody wants to vote for Ohio State because they get bored of it. Mm-hmm. Like now, you're talking on February 28th and March 1st that Jim Harbaugh has got it figured out because he landed a commitment from a five star who has not signed and will not play for the team this year. How does that change the perspective of this team? There's so much desperation to try and will Michigan back into prominence, like. How does this one thing signify any change? It doesn't to me. Well, I think it's a little bit because they do some of the same thing with Notre Dame. You have a big blue blood branded program for football, and everybody wants them to be good. I think everyone wants that partially because you want to see them play Ohio State and have a worthy adversary, a team go out there that you can see battle back and forth and actually have a realistic shot. Like you said, you get bored of looking at the East. It's like, all right, is Penn State very good now? No, they're not. They were struggling. Um and you, Michigan was kind of an afterthought. Yep. And I think that it just – it's not good – number one, I don't think it's good for the Big Ten. It's not good for the sport when they've been struggling that much. And it's it's great to beat them, but it's also great to beat them when they're playing when well they and that they can go and yeah. contend and, mm-hmm. and beat other teams. When they're you know losing to Indiana, they did probably beat Indiana this year, didn't they? Barely. First game of the season. But, that I mean, that's tough. Like, and that's where their program was getting. Getting a kid who's an in-state kid – from Detroit, which is really gross <laughs> points, right by Detroit, super close. And on top of that, his dad's an alumnus. Like, I, mean, I don't know you if I would feel put, bad if you don't get that kid, yeah, right? It's like, it's not, <laughs> that's one of the ones that you're supposed to get. Mm-hmm. Not on the other side, where like, you're talking about not only going somewhere else, not going to like Sparty or Notre Dame, but going to Ohio State. Yeah. And because of the DB factor is there, and 
And he's just committed right there. Who's not to say that there might be a point in the future oh. if their defense looks like trash again this year, mm -hmm. that that might, that recruiting might be reopened oh. at some point in time. Well, and the biggest thing is that Jim Harbaugh put together that staff to recruit. It's, it's, I don't know if there's a guy over 50 on that staff because he wanted young, energetic guys mm -hmm. who can recruit. We don't know how they're going to do when it comes to coaching the football on the field. He put the staff together for recruiting purposes because apparently he can't you know, have his cake and eat it too. He wants to either have football coaches or recruiters. He's went the recruiting route this time. I don't think it's going to work out on the field. If it doesn't work out on the field and they look bad, like you said, Bob, this five-star could be looking at it like, I don't care if my dad went here or not. Why, why do I want to play there? Yeah, I think it's way too early to crown you know, him going to Michigan, yeah. first of all. Um, I will admit when I read that, ah, they got one from us. You know, it's kind of what I thought. And in the era that we live in now where five stars are the biggest thing in the world, I see why they're pushing it and I see why they're, cause they're trying to make other five stars say, Hey, yeah. we got other guys who are, you know, big time players going to this school. So I, I, I get all that. I don't even care about the DB. I, I think Jim Harbaugh is his own. He, he has his own self to blame. Look at their quarterback situation. Everybody thought he was the quarterback whisperer. I know I'm getting off track, but get off track. How many quarterbacks have left Michigan since he's been there? Right. I mean, I don't think he's had one come all the way through and graduate. Nope. So that's where you need to start. He's hiring all these other coaches to recruit. You're the quarterback whisperer. You're supposed to be the one that brings the quarterback in. And it, that was the first few years we heard. Well, he doesn't have his guy yet. He doesn't have his guy. Well, hopefully this. What I think. McCaffrey? He just transferred. Did he just transfer? He's yeah, Dylan yeah, McCaffrey. They, the, it was McCarthy then? Yeah, J.J. McCarthy is okay. the five-star that's there. And then who, they put in uh, that guy at the end of last year. Spencer, what? Oh, oh I forget, but he was he was better than the Milton. Or, Beat out Milton. Yeah. Cade Mac. He actually, Cade looked, yeah, he actually looked like he could throw the ball. But my point being, it starts with Harbaugh, in my opinion. They can have all this other stuff going on, new coaches, new recruiters, all this. But, He's the quarterback guy. He's got to land somebody or keep one of these guys there for four years that he can maybe develop. But that's the other part of this, Jay-Z. Like, what did we talk about in August? Oh, well, Joe Milton, he looks like Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. Why are we doing all of this before Michigan has accomplished anything on the field? Bob, I completely agree with the things that you, you said about this. It, it, I, I think it would be awesome if the rivalry was restored to full competitive luster. Mm -hmm. I think that, that would be awesome. I'm not saying I don't want that to happen. I'm saying... Make them earn it before you start, you know, saying they're a top twenty-five team in the mm -hmm. preseason, or you're going to pick them to beat Ohio State in the East Division, or any like yeah, like three out of four like, years. Wait or until they stupid. wait until they do it because there's no evidence that they can. Ever since I've, I I have never in person seen Michigan beat Ohio State. I'm never ever going to pick them to do it until it actually happens. Well, that's this year coming in. Maybe it was this year or last year when everybody was saying. Maybe it was Ryan's first year in there. This is the year Michigan oh, beat them while they're down. Get them while they're down. I kept looking. I'm like, all I I know this. They have really good. Ohio State has really good players on their team. Like, mm -hmm. I can't couldn't say that yeah. on, as a, on a consistent level with the depth and mm -hmm. all, everything. I'm like, so until you proven proven this to me, and I talked to a number of national guys, and having to listen to Desmond talk about it all the time was uh, nauseating because <laughs> like, dude, there's they recruit significantly better than they do. And by the way, I know that they're developing players at a higher level. Like that's not even debatable. Oh, not at all. With how, how many players Ohio State's putting in the draft and what their players look like when they leave school. So it, it I think it's just, it's that desire for nostalgia a little bit. It's the same conversation I mentioned Notre Dame and you know, mm -hmm. but Texas is like the other prime example. Oh yeah. It's like Every Texas, year it's we're Texas back. back. <laughs> Texas is back. I'm like, you can continue to say it, but that doesn't yeah. make it true. Yeah. You can you, know, like, you can win the Alamo Bowl and say we're back. <laughs> we're back. But like, you gotta win the first game next year and you usually don't. <laughs> yeah, Tom Herman, there you go. <laughs> I mean that's oh and it's just crazy. You're saying that's it's good. Texas back and they're losing to Maryland mm -hmm. in the in open the opening game. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I think it comes down to you know, you talked about the haters. And I think I agree. I agree with Bob too. Where people want that to be what it is, you know, what it was. Right. Yes. But I think the haters never put Ohio State up there because they get bored of it, and they. It's almost like they just want to piss off Ohio State fans by doing this to get the clicks, you know, because there's no other reason for them to really be saying all Michigan's back when they've been beaten by us, you know, really bad the last few years. I just like to be right, Jake. <laughs> like, like, yeah. When people use their yeah. ballots to like. Make a statement. There's a lot of people that don't care about like, being right nowadays like, in, in the world. No accountability. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you, 40 people voted for Michigan to win the Big Ten two years ago. Who? Tell me who did it. Yeah. Put I your name on it. I want to know. Yeah. 
who is actually believing that Michigan was good enough to beat Ohio State two years or three years ago? They, because that was, I just. So you want to write a story like Michigan is now a favorite? Wait, they haven't earned anything. Yeah. So make them do it. We do this every year, right? We do it every. I know, year. and now we're, that's there, what's my frustration is. Since we're doing it in March, that's what it is? We're doing it in this March. early. There's a specific example. I'm to be doing, for a year and a half from now. We'll I'm be in supposed school. to be complaining about this in July, not in March. <laughs> I can give a specific example every single year. 2018 was Shea Patterson coming oh, to Michigan. Yeah. He was mm-hmm. going to be the former five star that helps them get over the hump. They come I thought that might actually be real because I watched him at Ole Miss. Yeah, and yeah. He was pretty yeah. Well, good. You thought, but maybe he yeah. got worse. They, <laughs> they come to Columbus and get <laughs> spanked. And then 2019, oh, get them while they're down. They have them at home. Michigan, you know, you don't know what Ryan Day is going to do. Spanked. Last year, we are four months removed from a 30-point spread in the Ohio State-Michigan game. Think about that. Did the, did the roster transform in the last four months? I don't believe so. Not unless a, uh, another transfer at quarterback <laughs> joined the program and if to the, revolutionize. Is it that freshman class that finished well behind Ohio State's freshman class that's going to help Michigan get over the top? And by the way, I just want to bring this up because it's hilarious. Five days before Will Johnson commits to, to, commits to Michigan, I don't want to dunk on high school kids, but the new 24-7 rankings came out. There was a swap at cornerback. The number five cornerback in the country became the number four cornerback in the country, and the number five dropped down to number four. Or you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, four. The fifth cornerback that Man. swapped to the fourth hard. is committed to Ohio State. You don't say. So, this is the kind of commitment that will get Michigan up to par with Ohio State. Oh, by the way, Ohio State has a corner that's ranked higher than that guy. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Here's the problem. I want to hear Bob. Is that that's you didn't watch? You didn't watch the game this year. Because it didn't happen. And I was trying to remember plays from the game, and then I realized <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, talk, didn't play. I'm like, wait, Ryan hasn't beat him twice because he's only played him once because yeah. the game didn't transpire. So I guess without like the, the annual game to refresh your memory, maybe you know it's been over a year now, Austin, so people have for slowly forgotten exactly what it looked like. I mean, like you I, said, a 30-point spread. I mean, this year it, it, it would have been embarrassing. It would it was bad, and I'll tell you, I came back. Oh goodness, it was when Rich Rod was still the coach. I was it was maybe 2010, 2000. Yeah, because 10 it was an even year, so it had been in Ohio State. And uh, I'm playing. I was playing in Detroit, so I could just drive back. And there, it was right. That was when it, they had just moved it after Thanksgiving, so it's like perfect. Mm-hmm. And they moved it here. I can go see the game. And I remember I was like so excited to go watch my first Ohio State Michigan game, and people were leaving. Like, at the, like in the third yeah. quarter, I'm like, what are they doing? Like, well, they're up by 17. I'm like, but, but that's the game. Not, it's a game. Like, yeah. there's no respect. Like, you, you stay and watch the whole thing. Like, nah, not anymore. Like, this is, yeah. this, see, this this is we're just used to this. Just like, yeah, I guess it's a varsity club. I don't know. We're yeah. out of here. Yeah. 62 39. Like, I think people stayed for that one. They enjoyed the <laughs> blowout, but. Oh, everyone was there for that one. Yeah. They were seeing if, you're gonna, if he was going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's but that's the way it is, and I mean it's not even just about those two teams. Like, I mean Michigan had to pull out something in double overtime against Rutgers. The loss to Michigan State last year was absolutely embarrassing. It was some of the worst football I've ever watched. Michigan State wasn't even good last they were year. Terrible. They that's were terrible. amazing. They lost to Indiana. I mean, yeah, you, Bob, you were talking about that, like trying to jog your memory. Like they lost to Indiana. Yeah, they beat Minnesota in that first game. Minnesota right? was Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, but we, who, who we thought so, was going to be and good. That's what but, makes it in the overdrive. Like they actually yeah. played a game, and they, they looked like a solid oh, football gonna team. We're going to shoot them up into the top mm-hmm. ten. Joe Milton is going to win the Heisman. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand it because not every program gets treated that way. I know that Ohio State doesn't. It's not. I, I, I just find it such a, an annoyance. It doesn't affect me in any other way other than I just don't understand why it happens. Because if in your fight song it said Champions of the West, then that would be different. They don't even understand geography. <laughs> <laughs> well, back in that time, when they, back when Michigan was winning national championships, it was the West. Yeah. Okay. Um, Long time ago. Back when way. there were only 42 stars on the flag. <laughs> Jay-Z, I wanted to ask you about this. I'm going to move on before I just really <coughs> blood pressure skyrockets. What do you make of Justin Fields continuing to be, I don't know, dismissed? I can't believe it. It's mind-blowing Having to me. him as the fourth best quarterback in this draft. Some people, not everybody. I just, I, I can't understand what they're looking at. I, uh, I, I saw one. I think it was like, he was like sixth. And I'm reading names of kids I've never even heard of before. Yeah. Playing at these small schools type thing. I don't understand it. I don't think it's, I don't think it has anything to do with, 
kind of what has happened with Dwayne. I, I don't think so. They're different types of players. I don't think they weren't buddies. They weren't there with each other, you know. And I, I don't know why because early in that year, I mean, when he had more touchdowns than incompletions, nobody was saying anything. And then, you know, I mean, and we knew that wasn't going to last. And, we, you know, that's just the way football goes, especially playing quarterback. You know, you're hot and then something bad happens and you're going to get a couple picks and that's going to happen. But to just give the kid, basically give up on him because he had, you know, a couple tough games that they fought through and still won, right. which I think is a pretty big important thing for being a quarterback of a team, it's mind-blowing to me. And I, and I think – I, heck, I don't know. I don't know people like Bobby does in those in those leagues, but I bet there's a lot of yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Justin Fields, yeah, put him down there at six because we know we're going to take him as a second quarterback. <laughs> you know, like they don't want people coming up and be. That's just kind of there, there's probably some games like that going on. Do you agree, Bob? I talked to a couple of people who I trust who would give me like their honest assessment, not yeah. being pushed out there like. Yeah, like they're like there's a debate maybe between him and Wilson at two or three, like but it's pretty I could see I could see that. Like yeah. it's pretty close. Like the attributes and traits that he possesses yeah. are all there for him to be a really good NFL quarterback. And he, he's a, the Dwayne comparison, like that stuff does it does impact people, yeah. but I would say this, like you meet the kid, he's far different yeah. personality yeah, right. wise. Mm -hmm. Like he came back, you know, he's dealt with a lot of stuff, he's tough, you saw him take shots. Oh, yeah. He's very mature, he's you know, viewed as a leader. And that's the one thing is, you know, that, like just dealing with that and the pressure and the expectations oh, yeah. you have. Yeah, he's going to be able to be the face of your program. Yes. He can handle that. And, you know, he's shown it through a tough year at Ohio State, yeah. rallying, doing everything he could to make sure he was on the field. He's done everything, right? I, I just, I, it's mind blowing. I agree. I would be okay if they're like, ah, Wilson, him, Wilson, him. But to be throwing up kids who, you know, I had to go look up, it's just mind blowing to <laughs> I, me. I don't understand it. I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll make it past the top 10. Yeah, I, I, I agree with I you. I would be surprised if he's, a, if he's drops past the third quarterback taken. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Atlanta takes him there because he's in Atlanta. You know, he's, yeah. mm -hmm. he's went to Georgia. He's, is he from it? He's from uh, South he's, Carolina. He's from Georgia. He's, he's from Georgia. So that wouldn't shock me at all, you know, especially with him there. So I, I, I a lot of this stuff comes out, and it's like, how much can we beat up a guy? Mm -hmm. And especially now, because you know, there's no combine, there's yeah. no way to even see him and to look. You can watch him on pro day. It's like, okay, you're throwing against there. Yeah. What does that mean? If you don't look good there, you, yeah, Terrible. yeah, exactly. My my favorite Fields criticism so far of this draft process is he doesn't get past his second read. Well, when your first two reads are Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, <laughs> and they're need, open, <laughs> what do you need your third read for? And you know, it, it's kind of the same thing. I watch Justin Fields. I watch Mac Jones from Alabama. Mac Jones throws to the most open guy on the field at all times. Can, does he ever throw in a tight window? No, he doesn't. Then you look at Justin Fields and what he did against Clemson and the tight windows that he had to fit the ball through mm -hmm. on multiple occasions, not just the touchdowns. And you're like, what does the NFL not like about this guy? He played with probably a broken rib. We don't know that for sure. but I, Yeah, the fact they want to focus on maybe a tough game against the Northwestern instead of watching a Clemson game. Clemson has been one of the best teams in you know college football for how many years? And to see him go against them – and have a good game. <laughs> it's like, all right, yeah, that's what I would want to watch. Those, you know, that film. A game that was clearly more impressive than the guy that nobody even questions at the top of the draft, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Trevor Lawrence deserves to go number one overall. I'm not saying that uh, Urban Meyer and the Jags won't take him, but that game in particular, you're putting on that film. Mm -hmm. I, that should twice. have been more than enough to tell you twice. Justin Fields outplayed him twice. Yeah. I don't know that I would care if if I was a Jaguars fan. If they went with Justin Fields as the first pick. Yeah. I mean, the kid's a stud. He can get you out of trouble with his legs. He can do different things. Now, I know a lot of people say Lawrence is, you know, one of those guys that comes around every blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, Justin Fields, to me, he's a winner. He's a kid that I would let run my, you know, yeah. be a part of or be the head of my program. And uh, I wish him best of luck. I, it is mind-blowing. That frustrates me. Bob, I know you got some info on the uh, changes to the season ticket policy for yeah. Ohio State. Explain the this. The per seat contribution, um, you know, I, I tried to break it down with a, a little explainer on Letterman Row last week. Um, some seats are going to be a little bit more expensive. Some are going to be cheaper. About 14,000 of them that won't require any of these donations to the Buckeye Club. All of this is going towards Ohio State trying to make sure that the athletic department can continue to pay for scholarships. They need $29 million to do that. It's getting much harder uh, for that organization to meet that without some other assistance. This seems like a good solution compromise to me. Uh, what did you make of what you found out? There? Well, people that have had tickets for a long time and, you know, maybe their families or whatever, mm -hmm. and, or got tickets where, you know, through, you know, the families had given money or maybe they had grandfathered in and professors and things like that, they're really upset. Yeah. 
you know, I understand that. I understand the tradition and how important it is. You know, I looked around and, you know, the way Tennessee and, you know, Michigan and Texas, like the way some of these other big schools do it, it's this way. And, you know, frankly, I mean, they treat athletics like its own independent uh, own independent business. Doesn't take any money from the rev- mm-hmm. university. Frankly, the twenty nine million it gets for scholarships is paid into the university. Into the university. It's like the university um, gives yeah. free free scholarships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the university has been able to take advantage in the past. Like you know, there's the president's club and different things where you donate money to the school and you'd get that sports tickets. Well, dude, you want to donate money to the school? We can put your name on a classroom. I mean, that's the way I look at it. I mean, yeah. and I know under- people are upset about that, and you know, you want to do this, and this may hurt the general fund and raising, but like. No one's crying. Like the, the athletics, they, they got ham- hammered this year with everything that happened. Like, mm-hmm. hey, can we get a check for like fifty million to cover some of this stuff? No, they're not. They're not doing any of that. So, you know, this is what they've kind of had to do. And it's here's the thing: I don't want to ever hear anybody tell me again that college sports is amateurism because this is a variable pricing model. They already have a variable through the games. They have variable seat costs throughout the entire stadium. There is nothing amateur left about this. It's it's a profession. It's a fully professional mm-hmm. model. And so. If I have to listen to anyone else sit there and tell me it's about this and the kids get I, – I, there's value in the scholarship. There's value in a lot of things. But don't tell me that there's anything amateur about it because it's run like a professional business. And there's professional money attached yeah. to it. I mean, $29 mil a year to cover you know, other scholarships that the football team is basically you know, having to do every year. That's, that's tough. I, I've read it, the thing you, know, you put on you know, Letterman Row. Am I breaking this down correctly? You're going to donate a certain amount of money based on where the tickets are. Yeah. In order to pay for the tickets, tickets on that, top of that yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. that's how it's right. always been, though. So, well, granted, yeah, it was a, I paid a lifetime thing, so I haven't done yeah. you know, yearly contributions. But, but if to get, a, if you didn't play, it's to get in the Buckeye Club, it donate fifteen hundred dollars. Then Is depending that, on yeah. how where you were at and how much money you've given, mm-hmm. like yeah, then your, you could, your point you system. Could, how, well, how but even before that, they had selected seats, and you could get grandfathered, and that's why gotcha. they did the point system to get people to donate more. Yeah, and now yeah. they're like. We're doing away with that. You got to donate every year, and so hmm. you know, I get four. I get my two varsity O's. I get this. Like your seats will actually be less than what they were. Yeah, that's like all right, that sounds good to me. I mean, because that's why I'm like, we need more money. How is it possible that my seats? Well, yeah, I know, less? right? Yeah. And we, that this, donation, this, I guess, is and this offsetting. Sol- that. And this solves the problem. So that's I understand why they did it, and this has been in the works for a couple of years. They've been trying to get this through, and they obviously had to get yeah. voted off by the. Uh, uh, by the board of trustees. Yeah, they had seen. I mean, studies done. I mean, you know, that's yeah, that, the best best route to go. So it is what it is. But it's going to make a lot of and those old timers and traditionalists. You know, there's going to be some people. Just from like the athletic department side. You know, I I had a conversation with Gene on Wednesday before I jumped off the grid for a few days, and you know, they first had this looked at by this ticketing you know evaluation services like ten years ago. It's been almost a decade. Jeez. And at that time, they were saying, you need to do variable pricing. This is, you know, yeah. the person. You need to treat it like a, a professional yeah. sport. Well, that, yeah, exactly. But That's they, what they tell you. They, they didn't even, uh, you know, adopt any of the recommendations that first year. You know, I think it wasn't until, you know, four or five years ago that they went to variable, pr- variable mm-hmm. pricing. Then they did the mini ticket packages like two years ago. They hadn't done any of that stuff that everyone else. What the, what professional teams professional do. Professional teams. But even like Northwestern has this. Like you, you mentioned the big yeah. ones there. You know, Texas has a very aggressive one. Um, you know, this is just, I think, catching up a little bit for Ohio State and that, you know, they needed to, you know, in some ways because we're talking about that deficit uh, overall just from COVID, but they were already struggling in some ways to, to match up uh, with the financial requirements for those scholarships. So this will fix it, hopefully. We'll see. Yeah. I think for the most part it's a win, but you can't please everybody uh, unless you come to Roosters. And, That's right. And they've got something for everyone, uh, including mac and cheese bites in honor of Anthony Schlegel's birthday. Uh, come get those on Appetizer Tuesday. Thanks to Bobby Carpenter and Justin Zwick, as always, for hanging out and giving their insight. That's Spencer Holbrook down there. Uh, and thanks again to Nicole Cox for everything here at Roosters. Right. This has been Letterman Live. It's a fun, casual joint. Come check it out this week. We'll be back here next Monday uh, for more talk about the Buckeyes. We will see you then.